Hi everybody, so you're Grafo here, and it's been quite a while, but I wanted to update you guys in what I've been working on. So for the people that don't know, I have been working on a game for quite a while. It's basically an online sandbox inspiring Final Fantasy Tactics with isometric style and well, not really pixel art because I don't even know what is this art style called, it's just basically hand drawn and it's reaching a point where it's more stable so I, I think I can finally kind of start talking about it the reason I have been keeping it under the curtains is because there was a lot of polishing and bugs needed but it's kind of working it's getting there if we talk about the technical aspects the game is being working in PHP and JavaScript with a mixture of some libraries I'm a monkey when it comes to explaining the technical stuff because as you can imagine uh, I'm mostly focused on everything that is art design sound illustration <laughs> everything that you can see i did it and if it works the programmer did it so basically it's a mixture of like i do all the visuals you do all the code let's put it together uh, i also need to work on the sound some balance and all of that but i i think that's uh, probably game design if you want to put it in that window and speaking about game design something i was interested in is that the players can interact with well most of the world that's why every single plant that you see and basically every object in the game is something that the player can interact with sometimes you record different tools but like the plants and the vegetation that you see here i can collect it and every single one gives me a different kind of leaf depending on the plant that you're collecting from so for example if i go over here i'm gonna get some red petals for example there you go or if i go over here i think there's some blue petals over here depending on the plant you're collecting Players can also pick up items in the world and place them wherever they want. This is mostly for, you know, customization and that includes terraforming the world, like uh, building blocks or removing blocks, just like that. And in the same way you can customize the world, you can customize your avatar or how your avatar looks in the world. From the hairstyle to the eyes. to the eyebrows mode and other parts of the face. In the same way, you can customize your miniature avatar. You can change every part of the clothing and also you can color the pieces. For example, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a cloak on myself like this one over here. And as you can see, it changes also on the world. So now I have it in the world. Let me show you the back. This covered most of the features that we had in the previous version, and now I can start talking about all the new things that we've been working on over the past months. The first thing we've been working on is the documentation. Let me go to my inventory. As you can see, all of these items have no names and they have uh, question marks on them. This is because technically your avatar collected some things in the wall and your avatar doesn't know what it is. So what you can do is you can open it to open this scroll and then you can name it whatever you want. In this case, because I suck at naming, I'm gonna call it leaf uh, A. And then if I go to the next one, I, I can call it, I, I don't know. It can be anything you want, like uh, pp leaf anything so then on in this area you can add pages with this button over here you can add as many pages as you want and in there you can write any information you want about this leaf i found this in the lush bayon obviously it could be a little bit more specific or useful but this is just a demonstration so then this gets saved and technically you can craft this into actual scrolls and give it to other players the idea is that people in the game can actually document the world around them and of course you're gonna have people that just name everything pee pee poo 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 papa or whatever like that but there's also other players that actually put some effort in the names and things like that and this one over here it's if you're gonna write in english hello world but it also has compatibility with Vodeira, with, uh, it's a language that we created for the game. I don't know, I, I have fascination for languages, so I added one based on the lore of the world we're working on, which is the language of the bugs, uh, like Kibunobu Dorem. And if you press this button, this one over here, it will translate it exactly how the markings, I think that would be the wording. Uh, so with that you can have English and Vodeira, or if you want you can actually have like full Vodeira. Uh, and it immediately translated, translates it to, a, what is it called, to the language. It even puts it properly if, um, let's say I copy all of this over here, if you press it again it actually gonna put it how Vodeira should be written which is from the bottom to the top left to right uh, i know it's a it's a different thing but this is just something that we wanted to have a uh, compatibility with the scroll system 
Finally, if you want to turn this into a scroll, an actual scroll that you can give to another player, for each page that you have, you're going to have to use one unit of ink and one unit of paper that you can also craft. This has three pages, uh, and let me put something in the fourth, like yada, yada, yada. So with this button over here, I can just turn it into an actual scroll. There you go. And now I can go to my documentation tab with every documentation that you create is going to be here. And this is an actual item that you can give to another player. And if they open it, they can actually see the name, the image, and they can read the contents of your scrolls. The idea would be that in the future we can have like a library and there could be this user that documents a lot of things. So his name is going to be in the documents and people can see like, oh, I trust that name. So they can just get a whole book and read the whole thing and update their whole documentation based on what that person wants. And if someone doesn't like that, they can just go for a different book or make their own documentation. An interesting thing of this is that there could be some other player that is fucking, who knows, very far from this other community and they have their own documentations i don't know what's going to happen when multiple people have different documentations and probably they're going to fight for who owns the library i have no idea what's going to happen but i really wanted to have this system in game so if there is technically like a wiki it will be in game made by the players Working stations have been added. They can be crafted by hand. Some of them need to be crafted in another station. Uh, the player can customize the skins of each. For example, if you want to make a campfire, you can make a very basic one or you can make other designs. So let me craft the basic one. Once we do, we can actually place it in the ground. And if we activate it, we can get more light. As you notice, you can see how it's flickering at the edges of the screen. That's not a feature, that's a fucking bug that keeps coming back. We're gonna sort it out, don't worry. <laughs> Working stations allows you to craft more things and do things with your materials. For example, in here, I can boil water. Or in this one, I can cook. There is a station for almost anything that is needed, for crafting more advanced materials or for even just using compost. You can throw some meat so it's gonna decompose over time or you can craft seeds, etc, etc. We can talk about the whole new coloring system, which is done in this table over here. As you can see, you can make powders of colors, and then with that you can make ink. For example, if I want to make this green powder, all I need is uh, green leaves. Or if I want to make the blue one, I will need blue petals. If I want to make the red one, I will need red petals. And same for the other ones. I mean, these ones are pretty basic to figure it out. Other ones, you're gonna need to figure it out how to get them or what kind of flower or plant you need to find in the world. Little by little, we're adding more powders. In this other table, people can make the ink by combining the powder that I make from the grinder with some water and ta-da. There you go. So now I made blue ink. So let me make red ink. So now I have blue ink, red ink, and uh, I don't know, let me make another red one. And I can grab all of these ones. And now I can combine them here. I can put a blue with another blue, let's say with a, a red. And that should give me, if I'm not mistaken, purple or some kind of purple. And as you can see, I got this new color, which I'm gonna pick it up. And let's say I wanna paint the color of my hair. And I got some purple. Probably people are gonna need to write some recipes on how they make some colors. The way it works is you combine three colors to make a new color. On top of the coloring system, we added a whole system for crafting tools. Just like the ink, you also need three parts to craft a tool. These parts come with stats that when you combine them, you get a range of what are the possible stats you're gonna get for each tool. These stats change from the HP, the level of the tool, the accuracy of the tool, the chance of breaking the tool, how much damage it suffers if it breaks, the minimum bonus, the maximum bonus, this is how much you get when you use the tool, how much it costs to repair and if the tool provides light. So as you can see, these tools require three parts to be made. This is a very basic table that just shows the very basic parts to make a very basic tool. Like if you wanna make a forage basket, you need these three parts to make it. However, later on you can get like a advanced table that has more parts just for forage baskets. If you're interested in forage baskets, like this one over here, everything that you see that is white, it's colorable. Other parts might be a little bit more complicated to make. For example, things that require metal, you're gonna need to get the ores from the caves and then you use like a forge, I think that's what it's called, where you're gonna melt these ores and then you're gonna need an anvil 
And in the anvil, you can make these metal parts. So in the case I want to make a forage basket, I go to this table after crafting the parts I need. Then I go to the forage basket and it, it shows me, okay, first you need the three main parts and then you can put three decorations. So my main part is going to be, let's say, this piece over here. The second one is going to be the handler. So I can go with, I'm going to go with the standard handler and I'm going to also probably go with the standard set. So now I can go back and I can color it. Uh, let's say I paint this like that and let me paint the handler also the same color with the inks that I made and probably the top uh, what if I go for the darker tone and let's add some decorations uh, these are not needed to finish I can I could actually craft it right now but it's always handy to have some decorations because they have some extra stats so if I pull this rope for example and uh, let me color it uh, but I don't have that many combinations of colors, but what about this one? All right, and uh, let me add, actually I can change this rope for this, it looks pretty. Uh, I don't think I need to put the other ones, but I can put this one too. And uh, let me color it, uh, let's say this color. So as you can see, here's where you use the inks that you craft. So if you wanna actually have like fancy reddish tones of baskets, then you actually need to find the combinations to make those colors. Now then we go to craft it, and it's gonna craft the thingy. We pick it up and now I can equip it and I can show you what it does. First, let me show you how easy to collect things without a tool. As you can see, my character needs to go one by one and the maximum amount of items he can collect, it's one. It's always going to be one. That's the limitation of not using a tool. The benefit is that you always collect something. It's a secure one item. Now, if I equip the basket and I use it, You can see I can collect a lot more. This is because this specific basket that I just crafted has a bonus of max six. That means that from one, it can go all the way up to plus six items. The trade-off is that it has a terrible accuracy. It has an accuracy of 53 points. That means that most of the time I will be missing. Just like that. Yeah, so when you're crafting items, you might want to trade off by looking at values of the parts, the stats of the parts, and be like, okay, what do you want? Something that can give you a lot of items, but it's kind of risky and it sometimes it's not going to pick up things, or something that gives you a little less, but it's mostly secure every single time. Keep in mind that items do degrade after a while, where they start losing some stats, like the HP, or, or the chance of breaking increases, or how much can you repair it also starts going down. But the benefit is that as the item degrades, the accuracy increases. I, the logic is that you have been using something so much that even if it's degrading and you know falling apart, you're getting better at using it. In some other cases, you wouldn't even be able to interact with the item unless you have equipped the tool for it. For example, the locks that you see in the blush biome, they need an axe. or with fishing. And just like the tools, the structures also decay over time, but you can repair them with this item over here. As long as you have it in your inventory, you can get close to the structure and holding up, you can repair it. Actually, you don't even need to be close to the structure, you can repair multiple items just like this. This is not even my house, but I should repair things I have been using the house of another player. The voice system was also completely worked. Now the characters actually speak Vodera instead of just random nonsense. We did add it a, a couple hundred recordings, so there is even more variations of the talking. Uh, between those things, the new things will be that there is angry talking now, uh, with shorter versions or longer versions. Also, we added some trigger words. I can probably show you some examples. This will be... Uh, let me do a short text. And if the character goes for a longer sentence, it will be something like this. Uh, this is a longer sentence. Yes. So the voice matches more along the text, depending on how much you write. The other change we did is that we have fast talking now with only one exclamation mark that used to be yelling, but now we have fast talking. So the character is going to speak faster if you put one exclamation mark. If you put two exclamation mark, we have a new system, which is for the angry. 
vanadu flem so he's no longer like faster but he's like it's likely annoying and angry kick no the kid and then we we kept the three exclamation marks for yelling La 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 la. Uh, one, two, three. As you can see, it has a bigger range of uh, of noise. More people can hear it. We're eventually gonna need to probably balance that. Probably makes you tired if you're yelling all the time. We kept the whisper system. We added two variations for the O and the U text, which usually triggers when you put an O at the beginning of your sentence. And then you say text something something. No, dude, no, the cover. We got the same one with. Ah, oh, I think I might be speaking out of my ass. Let me check. Test, test, test. Uh, no, they're okay. Oh yeah, no, we have it. Then we added the triggering sounds. If I'm not mistaken, if you just put a question mark, mm -hmm. most of the triggering sounds now can be applied if the player uses three letters. For example, M M M. Hmm. E W W. Ew. Or you have. Uh, oh. I think you can't even have shorters, if I'm not mistaken. Oh. oh yeah, we do. We even have a, some kind of translation with the Vodera language. If the player says like, hi. Novoka. Uh, Novoka is the actual translation for hello in, in back language, Vodera. Novoka. So yeah, that also goes for hello, which is a little more formal. Deke Novoka. Uh, we also have it for like, bye. Noten. Uh, Sia, I think we have it. Not them. Yes, and um, we did also added a couple of. Uh, I think you can even yawn now. Oh. Yeah, you can yawn. You can clear your throat. <clears throat> I mean, there's a shit ton. We just had so much fun adding sounds to the list. You, you can even spit. <laughs> yeah, I think we do also have some curse words. Yeah, they're, no, they're saying the closest translation in Vodera to the, these words. But we're going to leave the players actually experiment and figure it out these ones as they go. Because there's a lot. <laughs> Another feature that was added was the implementation of blood on the screen, which appears if your HP goes below 100. Also, this comes with a whole new set of playlists, depending on how much HP you have. So if you have between like 90 points to 100, music changed to something like this. It's still relatively chill, but it's kind of like a warning that you're dying. You should keep an eye on what's happening to you. As you can see, I have an infection. We also added this. You can see modifiers, active modifiers, in the top right side of the screen. I can probably try to speed up my death by drinking water without boiling. And I can show you how it is to have the latest stage of blood. I'm putting myself in a lot, <laughs> a lot of risk just so you can see how much is it gonna cover you if you are like in a very critical situation. This feature was added because it's kind of easy to die if you just alt up and you forget about your character in the void. Hunger and tears are, are always running as long as your character is in the void. The, the only way to pause it and stop it is to fully log out. The, which makes your character completely disappear. The reason why the music got serious is because it's not like you die and you just lost a couple of minutes of progress and you just make a new character. You could have a character going for a long time, especially with the aging system that characters do get old over time. They get more hunger, their stomach gets bigger, capacity is gonna also get bigger. Even their portrait changes based on the age of the avatar. So yeah, as you can see, I'm fully healthy and the music goes back to chill music this is actually the night playlist but yeah what i'm trying to say is that the least thing you want is having a month character that you have been playing for a long time and suddenly because you just forget about it it's just it's just gonna die that's why it's important to for the game to give you those cues that it's like hey you're in danger you, if you're gonna go have a poop just log out there's no reason for you to just hang in there obviously you're, you're not gonna die immediately it takes a while in any case, the way it's balanced is that somebody that plays a lot should have to consume more food and eat more. Basically, doing more actions in the game, walking more, picking up, harvesting, crafting, all of those things gets your character tired, hungry, and thirsty. But if you just want to chill out with your friends and just chat, being in an inn or a tavern, or just uh, 
hanging around there, the hunger and the tears goes very slowly. Basically, it's based on the more you do, the more you need to consume. The hunger and tears system has been reworked. Uh, now it works more along the lines of most other games. A good example would be like Don't Starve. Uh, so if you have about 75% of your hunger feel it or 75% of your tears feel it, you start regenerating HP. Now that's the only way to naturally get HP. Otherwise, if your hunger reaches zero, then you start losing like five HP points per minute, I think. And it's the same if you have your tears too with zero, it's another five points. When it comes to biomes, we have the lush biome, which we have been tweaking and balancing. We just added trees uh, not so long ago. Most of the new plants are placed into this biome, but little by little they're moving into their separate and own biomes. We have the river biome, which is mostly water. Uh, we're, we're moving the sugar canes into this biome. Then the flower biome. I don't even know what to call this. It's just a biome filled with flowers. The main use of this biome is that this is the only place to get honey because honeycombs can, can grow. Then we have uh, the first work with going underground in caves. This will be, uh, it's a new biome. It's the first level of going down. I don't, I don't know what to call it, but technically this will be a cave biome. Not deeper, but slightly deeper. As you can see, we can have walls in this biome, even if you rotate the camera, and you go all the way to the other side. You see walls again. Also, mushrooms grow here. Ah, they don't have stats at the moment, but it should be something that you should be able to eat. And if we go deeper, we get to the... Oh, <laughs> someone, someone died here. We get to the... Uh, I guess, uh, how to put it? This is how caves will look in the game and this is where you can co collect the ores the idea would be that the deeper you go the better the ores but at the moment i just put a bunch of copper over here and yeah there's some lava too oh this reminds me there's one more biome which technically is the opposite of this let me show you we have the arctic biome which uh, is full of ice it's mostly ice it has all of his new sounds Surviving here should be a little bit harder. You can do get some tweaks here and there, but you need a pickaxe. Otherwise, you're just gonna get ice. This is the only place to get ice, actually. Oh, I like those sounds. We're usually adding new biomes based on needs. The, the only reason I added this biome is because we needed ice, so we can get the fridges. So if we find some use for other biomes, we can start adding them little by little. I think the next one is gonna be probably some field where lavender grows because we just added lavender. Other things that we have been working is general quality of life features. For example, one of the most useful ones would be the hot bar that now we have at the top of the screen. I can put my edibles over there with shift and place in a number like two, three, four. And then while you're doing things in the void, you can just press the button and it consumes it automatically. It's extremely comfy. Another quality of life is that you no longer need to collect manually every single thing from the working stations. You can just hold your left button and it collects the whole thing. We have also implemented the flag system, which as you can see there is a flag over here. The way it works is that you can place one flag and the range around that flag, all of the structures and everything that you have in the range of that flag is going to deteriorate slower. Also, other players cannot take items that you place over there, like your structures. They can use your structures if you have them open. Well, that's actually another feature I can probably show you. Uh, my storages, my chests, obviously also anybody can just use them, but I can also open the menu and lock it. If I lock it, only I can use this, the structures and nobody else can use them. Same thing goes for houses and places where you go in, you can just lock it and nobody else can go in. The other things related to the flag system is that not only everything around it the case is lower, but technically this is your piece of the world that belongs to you. So you can also name it. There is a whole naming system feature that allows you to put anything and if you follow the cursor, as soon as it's outside the area of the flag, it disappears and when it gets inside the range of the flag, it displays the name on the top of the screen. Another quality of life feature that was added was the ability to queue things. Now you can craft something, and while it's crafting, you can craft something else. And you can actually keep crafting. And then you can actually go and leave the table working, and the table is gonna keep working on its own, one by one. And then you can go and pick it at all. 
And one of the last features that we added would be farming, which uh, the process is very simple. All you have to do is craft this tile. And in this table over here, you can craft all the seeds that you need. We're making that you can craft almost every plant that exists in the world. If you see it, you should be able to make a seed out of it. And then you can collect the crops, just like that. We also added loading screens. Some of them with tips. And this should cover most of the features that we have been working on. Uh, well, actually, there's a lot more quality of lives, but I don't know if I should mention them all because honestly, I actually tend to forget most of the things that we work it on. For example, we added the option that if you hold C, you can see past messages or there is sound notifications whenever your message reaches somebody so you know if that person heard it, etc, etc. Hell, we have even background colors on daytime. Our people used to be black all the time, daytime and nighttime. So little by little, we're tweaking, polishing and adding things. There is still a couple of bugs here and there, like light bug. Sometimes it messes up, some tile might flash or something like that. And the next thing we're working on, it's a, well, I'm interested in potions. So I'm starting to work, work with mortars and poultices. I think that's how you pronounce it. And well, yeah, if you, if you want to be up to date with every single little bit of development or balance related to the game. I'm gonna link the Discord in the description, which uh, there is a channel where every single thing that is changed, added or modified, I write it about it. Also, we do have a Patreon that is gonna help us cover the cost of uh, the server and also hopefully keep this project going for a long time. I'll also link it in the description. And yeah, that should be for now until we... Uh, next week, we're gonna have trading. I, I wish I could show it in the video, but it's, this is still getting finished. Yeah, so... <laughs> new features, you're not gonna see them in this video. I'm gonna have to make a new other video soon enough, I guess. But that should be for this one.